Hello and welcome to Higher Energetic Resonance Inspirations. My name is Carol May Whittick and in this episode I delve into the questions about spiritual awakening. During a conversation with a friend recently we were talking about the awakened people that we see in the world today and just discussing what we feel they are awakened to. While we are gradually seeing that more and more people are seeing the world for what it truly is, this number still feels like the minority of the majority of society and then of that number fewer still are experiencing a spiritual awakening. My personal reasoning for this was that awakening to the world happens in reaction to an external catalyst. So most recently we've had the great orchestration of the global pandemic and a spiritual awakening is then sparked by an internal desire, a need to experience more than the prescribed life that we have all had set out for us. Being in that space of yearning then is what ultimately attracts us to what is necessary to guide us on that path. As per the quote, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. At the end of this episode, the meditation breathing practice I've included incorporates conscious connected breathing, a powerful transforming process which is included with Solfeggio frequency 852 hertz that aligns us with the spiritual order of the world. So let's begin. So spiritual awakening, what is it? For most people, I would feel that something will happen in your life that shifts you out of your routine. Uh, it will be something like your life changes. There'll be some trauma, some illness, death of a loved one, divorces, war, pandemic, midlife crisis. And suddenly you have questions about your existence and your purpose. So now you have these questions. This is a perfect opportunity to follow through on those questions and to delve deeper into that questioning or completely avoid the call to your soul and numb yourself back into normality and we see people using shopping sex gambling tv social media food to kind of take themselves away from those big soul callings so should you choose to explore then expect your life to change everything in your reality is then open for scrutiny so for many people when they have a spiritual awakening and maybe even to bring in my own experiences of this plural I say is it just starts with wanting to know more having questions as to why things are the way they are why people do the things that they do not feeling any deep kind of satisfaction or curiosity about the things that you're doing or the way that you're doing everything just feels so mundane without any kind of direction or purpose and meaningless to the extent. Uh, for myself, I have always and will always desire deeper conversations with people. I don't necessarily want to know what you do for a living, but I want to know your whys and how you see the world and how you see yourself within the world. People find that their job becomes meaningless and it might be a career that they've studied for and built their entire reputation on relationships suddenly don't feel like they can go anywhere you're not seeing each other on a deeper level you're not trying to expand the relationship or meet each other's needs your beliefs might change so you might have a certain ideology that may be it may even be a spiritual ideology that you want to change or it may even be something that had no spiritual aspect to it at all and suddenly you realize that something is lacking some connection some knowing is lacking and what you desire is is something that is going to enrich your life and looking at what you have at that point realizing that many things have to go so with all those changes imagine that you've had a trauma in your life or someone has died and you just realize that okay life is short am I making the most of my time here um, is the way that I'm living my life in in honour of myself, what more could there possibly be? So the world kind of gives us so many things that we're supposed to and 
there, especially over the past two years, two, three years we're going on now, has been a, a tidal wave of resignation, the great resignation, they've called it, where many people, after being put into um, house arrest, have realised that one, actually, without having to go backwards and forwards to work all the time, being at home, being in the family and just living very simply, maybe even not living on the same amount of money that they thought they needed, that life can be simplified. And in that simple, in that simplified version of life, there's actually more to get. And then going out and chasing the dollar and chasing the promotion and climbing up uh, the ladder towards the top of the perceived career success is um, not ultimately going to give them any satisfaction and just being able to be calm and be at home and be in the garden and cook food and have conversations with the people who are closest to you, you get so much more. So when we're recognising things that we used to have and we use for validation have no, no more satisfaction for us, there comes a moment where we're actually starting to rid ourselves or separate ourselves from those things. And this can be a period of intense confusion and loneliness as you're decluttering your life from the things that don't hold anything for you anymore. But you're still in that space where you've not compl- you've not kind of filled that vacuum, as it were, with something else. So there's this moment and this space of limbo And often this is called the dark night of the soul because we experience a lot of intense emotions that we probably have spent a lifetime repressing or suppressing or ignoring. And you might may have a heightened feeling of meaninglessness. Um, You may now experience feelings of loneliness now that you've separated yourself from people that you really don't feel that you resonate with and yet haven't found the people that will meet you. So you're very much on your own. You're not being distracted by just having anybody around you and you're faced with yourself. And that in its first instance, when you're not used to that solitude, can present itself as deep loneliness. During the dark night of the soul, you may experience intense sadness Um, shame, shame about where you're at in your life, shame about what you may have done. It's a real opportunity to really dig deep and investigate and look over the period of life that you've lived up until that time. Um, You may experience powerlessness, powerlessness because you don't know what it is that you want, powerlessness because what you use to maintain and give yourself the feeling of power has has you've let that go maybe you had a a a high position in in your work and or in the standing in a family structure or a peer group and now that you've moved away from that who are you now that you are not in that pole position as it were you may be feeling worthlessness you may be feeling rage and anger abandonment grief grieving is very much natural because you're letting go of things and even when we do notice and recognise that something is no good for us anymore, there is still a period of grieving, that space that it is has moved out of. It's the saying goodbye to that because it brought something to our lives for a certain period of time and now we step away from that and left with the space and the absence of what it is we have let go of. We may be feeling fragile, we may be feeling raw, we may be feeling vulnerable. It's everything that is all the emotions and all the feelings that are really kind of racking us to the core. And in a way, really awakening our senses because we tend to, as I said before, numb these feelings down to fit into what society wants from us. And we become part of the mass of society. So now that we're pulling away and we're actually finding out who we are, imagine we're going into the cocoon as as the caterpillar. We are pretty much allowing ourselves to disintegrate before we are reborn and new. And this is part of our ego that's dying as well. Everything that we thought we were, everything that we allowed other people to project upon us and to be 
um, who they assumed that we were and what we liked and where we were going and what we stood for, we've decided that that's no longer the case. And to transition in that state of allowing that persona to die in other people's eyes and in your own eyes is painful and it's tough work. It takes a lot of conviction to remain with it, to not just fall back into a place of comfort, even if that space of comfort was not serving you and could not serve you and your growth. I'm going to add a quote here from Hazrat Inayat Khan from Thinking Like the Universe, The Sufi Path of Awakening. There can be no rebirth without a dark night of the soul, a total annihilation of all that you believed in and thought you were. And from Thomas More, Dark Nights of the Soul, a guide to finding your way through life's ordeals. It is precisely because we resist the darkness in ourselves that we miss the depths of the loveliness, beauty, brilliance, creativity and joy that lie at our core. So something that the majority of people really struggle with is solitude. Solitude in itself is a gift and you can gain so much from really encompassing and being in solitude and seeing what it brings to you. It is in the space, it is in the times of solitude that you really get to find out what your voice sounds like, what your truth feels like and where you sit in an energetic space. To explain that is when you're out and about with people and there's so much going on, there's so much noise and so much distraction that you never really get the opportunity to pay attention to yourself. You might have a gut feeling or a sense of something, but it's it's always going to be interrupted by someone else is speaking to you. Someone else's opinion is coming through. If you're not used to what silence is and solitude is and it feels at the beginning of it, it can and will feel like abject loneliness and very difficult for the majority of people to really get into that space and appreciate the gift that it can bring you. The more that you can really encompass yourself in solitude, the greater the strength that you can bring to any kind of encounter because you're not relying on any external encounter or person to validate you because you know who you are without it so you don't need anybody to tell you that you're a good person a bad person whether you're doing well or not because in your solitude you recognize how to identify that in yourself. Jean-Paul Sartre if you're lonely when you're alone you're in bad company and a quote from Jane Eyre the novel by Charlotte Bronte I will care for myself. The more solitary, the more friendless, the more unsustained I am, the more I respect myself. So the thing to do in your solitude, the difficulty that people find in their solitude, but to use it as an opportunity to listen. What are you hearing? What are you hearing in your mind? Watch where your thoughts are going. What are you saying to yourself and about yourself? What are you saying about other people or situations that you find yourself in? Solitude can give you so much power. And this is one of the hardest aspects of going through a spiritual awakening is appreciating the solitude. You can also use this time to study. As you start to deepen your spiritual longings, you'll find that you want to listen, read, consume lots of different aspects and, and perspectives of spiritual of spirituality and it's a journey you know you're going to read a lot of things or you're going to find a lot of material that will immediately resonate with you and probably will carry you for a year or two you may take a few courses you may join groups and then there may come a time where you'll go in and you just realize it's not for you anymore that it's served its purpose to get you from one stage to another and you want something deeper and more expansive but by knowing that and that study is never in vain um, even if I think of all the different modalities that I've moved through over the years on my own spiritual path although I didn't realize that that 
was what I was doing. There always comes a time when I realise that it's not for me anymore. The group's not for me anymore. The teaching's not for me anymore. But I will always have learnt something at that point. You can always read. Meditation is only ever best done in solitude. And self-care, taking time to just really look after yourself, to rest, to sleep, to walk in nature to take long baths just to do things where you look after yourself so why would you want to go through all of that (laughs) because it doesn't really sound like that much fun right but the the thing to do is to ask yourself what experience do you want in your life is it enough for you and are you content to work and pay bills and buy things and then just die You know, you might have a few relationships there, you may have children there. And if you feel that you can get from the start of your life to the end of your life and you don't want anything more or any any explanation or uh, any kind of delving into anything as to why you're here or where we are or what this whole experience is about. Maybe you don't want to go through a spiritual awakening, but you're listening to this. So I assume that there's an area of this that has made you curious. My experience of every time I've gone through any kind of awakening and felt that I've peeled away another layer and gone deeper into my spiritual life, I just find myself asking deeper questions of life, finding that I'm really deeply held by something that is within myself but not necessarily of myself. And it's welcoming and and knowing that there is so much more to who we are than who we have told ourselves or been told and believed ourselves to be. It's connecting to some source of deeper love that is uh, infinite. It's learning to be in awe of life. For me, questions like that possibilities like that pique my curiosity this is why I want to uncover what these things are about I like the idea of feeling more expansion more joy more peace I love the idea of deeply understanding more and more about who I am and that just happens every time I go into that questioning and I see that everything around me needs to shift and I need to clear a lot of what I've held on to that I'm using to identify myself at that point to go deeper and that's another level of awakening. Also the times that we're in right now it's super important to have an awareness and have some discernment in this time to be able to know the truth especially when the deception is heavy. I feel that without having a really true core knowledge of who you are that comes from a spiritual awakening, it's going to be very easy to be swept left and right by the lies and the deception that is going on in our world right now. From Charles Swindoll, Charles R. Swindoll, we need discernment in what we see and what we hear and what we believe. From Proverbs 8, verse 5, O simple ones learn prudence, O fools learn sense. And you may have heard uh, said on numerous occasions that we are in a spiritual battle right now. So much tussle between evil and good, so much deception, so much lies. And again, without the, the ability to have discernment, to have that core knowledge, to have some connection that you can draw on and you can converse with, you'll be swept away with the lies of the world. There isn't really any other option, I don't feel. And to finish, when does it all start and when does it all stop, this spiritual awakening? Well, you may not like the answer to this question, but I actually like the answer to this question This is a journey and it's a never ending uncovering of yourself. It's a lifetime's work or lifetimes work. I would say that the journey is the purpose. It's an opportunity to witness yourself transforming, witness yourself gaining wisdom. You start to welcome the lessons that come into your life. So even though you go through the toughest of experiences, another breakup, another death, another argument, another loss, more trauma, more illness. Somehow, when you have 
have experienced a spiritual awakening, you understand that life isn't meant to be, what's that film, ha ha he he he, but you also notice that you'll be able to move through these events quicker and with more ease. It doesn't mean that it won't hurt, but you can actually recognise that there's a lesson to be learned and sometimes you won't even have to wait until hindsight. Um, you won't have to wait until the end to experience that hindsight. It will be as you move through the lessons, you can recognise what is happening you also get to recognize other people as well. And there's also a fine line between observation and judgment, but you're ab able to see where people are and understand what they're saying. Even if their words sound like one thing, you can feel into what it is and where they're coming from. And it gets more and more difficult for people to pull the wool over your eyes. It gives you surety, it gives you clarity it's a powerful thing and that alone is worth it. You develop more compassion for others. You develop forgiveness. You see the benefits of forgiveness and many people struggle with forgiveness and not understand the benefits of forgiveness for yourself to free yourself from the entanglement that you might be holding on to those vengeful feelings. Life becomes lighter. You appreciate the lightness in life and dare I say you become more fun. <laughs> to finish, from Sokni Rinpoche, be kind to yourself as you proceed along this journey. This kindness in itself is a means of awakening the spark of love within you and helping others to discover that spark within themselves. And the Zen proverb, before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Higher Energetic Resonance Inspirations. I really enjoyed this one. If you'd like to reach out to me, it's info at carolmaywittick.com, C-A-R-O-L-M-A-E-W-H-I-T-T-I-C-K.com. My website, carolmaywittick.com. Find me Carol May Wittick on Facebook and Kazmik, C-A-Z-M-I-C-K on Instagram and also her conversations and inspirations on Telegram. So I leave you with this powerful transformational breathing practice. Until next week. Thank you. Awakening and embarking on your spiritual journey is a magical yet daunting experience. This is the beginning of self-discovery, of healing, of individuation. It is a transformative, lifelong undertaking. As you grow, you will discover the true beauty of reality, nature and the soul of others. Your curiosity will blossom. There will be a new perception of what is possible in life as latent abilities, intuition, manifestation and your clear senses are activated. Over time you will find yourself drawn to like-minded and heart-centered people. This practice incorporates conscious connected breathing this is a powerful process that transforms us physically as more oxygen enters our cells. Emotionally, as it brings awareness to suppress feelings and on a spiritual level, by building a sense of wholeness and connection. The solfeggio frequency within this track is 852 hertz that aligns us with the spiritual order of the world and is in tune with our higher selves. For this practice, you may choose to be seated or to lie down. Conscious connected breathing is a powerful and transformative breathwork practice. And for this practice, we will start by practicing just 20 rounds of the full breathing. Over time, as you feel more comfortable and get used to the sensations that this invokes within you, both physically, emotionally and spiritually, you may then feel 
confident to expand the time that you spend practicing. So first be in your body, bring your focus back to yourself. Let's just take a deep breath in through the nose and filling up the body. And just release gently through the nose again. Take another deep breath in through the nose. And exhale again. And just continue to breathe in and breathe out, regulating your breath, calming yourself. And I explain a little bit more about the method of conscious connected breathing. Conscious connected breathing is going to be practiced when we practice the full practice with our mouth open, which differs slightly from many of the practices we've done before where we breathe in and out through the nose. The idea is to create a circular breathing, a conscious, connected, continuous breath. When we breathe in, we'll be breathing in and filling from the belly all the way up to the chest. You want to fill up as much as you can. And then the exhale is more of a release than any force placed upon it. So imagine when you're breathing in, you're breathing in more breath, more energy, more life force into the body. And the exhale is just about letting go. So everything falls out. Let go of all that doesn't serve you. Any blocks, sadness, fear, grudges. So let's just practice that continuous breath through the nostrils for five breaths and then I'll guide you 20 breaths through the mouth. We breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out, breathe in, and out, breathe in, and out, relax for one moment. One thing you may want to envisage during this is the waves on an ocean. Imagine standing at the edge of a beach and just watching as the water comes in and comes out. There's no stop, it's just a continuous moving backwards and forwards. And this is the same sensation that we want to connect and create with our breath. So let's do this now through the mouth 20 times breathing in and breathing out breathing out in in out in out in out 
in. fall into your natural breathing pattern. Notice the sensations that you may feel within your body. You've taken in deeper breath, more oxygen in the body. Feel how that invigorates the body. Feel where that may have alerted you to an area of blockage that needs some time to let go. It may bring up some emotions from you, a stored memory that you have suppressed for a long time that you may want to explore further. You may feel euphoric, bright, alert. You may feel nothing at all. This is your practice and whatever you feel is right for you. The track will continue to play for you to maintain a meditation. For you to ponder the new awarenesses you're feeling in your body and in your spirit right now. 